Okay, so we've kind of talked a little bit about this, but we're going to, like I said, start fresh. And I picked a couple examples. First, the pyramids in Egypt. Anybody uh, been to the pyramids in Egypt? No? All right. Um, so first thing we need to do is take a measurement on that map itself. So I'm going to do it with the ruler I have here. And I'll tell you, it's hard to see, but I'm going to go from the bottom one here. This is, if I measure that out, on my ruler, that's two centimeters. But remember, in the real world, we're talking about 50 meters. Am I ready to make a scale factor out of two centimeters and 50 meters? What's wrong with two centimeters and 50 meters? They're not, the same. They're not the same units. So the first thing we have to do is change them to the same units. So what I'm going to do is, if I have two centimeters, the way I can convert it is say, one meter has 100 <coughs> centimeters in it. And that gets rid of centimeters, so my new units are now meters. Okay. Um, so, you know, for at this point, that that's probably the quickest way for you to do a quick conversion. I don't mind if you use Google to do your conversion either. If that's uh, we're going to spend a unit doing conversions, but for now, um, I'm happy to see that you guys know that we can't use a scale factor until we make that conversion. So this is two divided by 100 which is going to be 0.02 meters. So now, I'm not dealing with two centimeters anymore. It's better if I talk about this as 0 0.02 meters, because they're the same. Okay. So scale factor is going to be what I measured divided by how big it is in the real world. Okay, so this is my scale diagram, or sorry, my scale factor. Now I can use it to figure out the size of these things in real life. So I'll take that measurement off the diagram. And this is, uh, I don't know if this is, it looks like the Great Pyramid in Giza. I'm pretty sure that's the one that I, that I uh, copied off the, the map. But if I was to measure it off, That's about eight centimeters on my ruler. So the size of that pyramid is eight centimeters divided by 0 0.0004. So my estimate here is that the pyramid is 20,000 centimeters. And that sounds enormous. Does anybody know how many meters that is? That's uh, 200 meters. Okay. So I'm going to do the Niagara Falls one with you now. How wide is Niagara Falls? Anybody been to Niagara Falls? All right. Anybody been outside of Surrey? Okay, fair enough. It didn't look like I was getting much response, so I just wanted to make sure. All right, so let's, let's take the measurement here. This is what I want to know is how wide is that? So first thing I need to find in this diagram is what? It's got two words. Scale factor, yeah, yeah. It's early still, so you might need some hints. Um, it tells me that I have 100 meters, and if I measure it out, 100 meters, uh, I'm going to say that's at 2.3 centimeters, is 100 meters. So, problem is, what's the problem right now? They're centimeters and meters, so we're going to switch them. 
2.3 centimeters, 1 meter has 100 centimeters, so that means I have 0 0.023 meters. And again, that's the one I want to work with because I have meters in both diagrams. So the scale factor is 0 0.023 divided by 100 because both of them are in meters. And that gives me a scale diagram of 0, 0, 0.023. 3. So make a prediction. Which one do you think is bigger? The Great Pyramid would the Great Pyramid fit inside Niagara Falls? What do you think? Or is it bigger? Barely fit? Okay, well let's see. According to our map here, I get five and a half centimeters. So the real world, our size is going to be um, five and a half centimeters divided by 0 0.00023. And that's uh, 23,913, 239 meters. Okay, now just uh, realize that I just pulled these off Google Earth. I don't know how accurate those scales are. I could be off with my ruler. You know, don't go making bets about how big they are. But I'd say that's probably a pretty good estimate for the, the, the where I've taken the measurements. You know, um, but the size of Niagara Falls, someone else might measure it differently. You know, they might say, no, Niagara Falls is like this. And then all of a sudden it's much larger, right? So in our picture... They look similar uh, in size, but again, it's probably something to do with the Google Earth maps that we used. I kind of have a feeling Niagara Falls is way bigger, but, but maybe I just, uh, maybe I didn't copy the right picture. Okay, so here's what we've already done, the scale factor for each diagram. And remember we talked about, super important that you know how to make a scale factor. You take what you measured in the diagram divided by the actual, and you must have the same units. So if nothing else, all I need you to do is say, hey, Mr. Joyce, I don't understand how to get the same units, but I know that I have to have the same units. I'll come help you convert them before you make your scale factor. Don't just go ahead and do it. It won't work. So this time, we're going to go backwards. I've got a floor plan for an apartment here, and I want you to uh, tell me what the size of it is in real life. But I'm giving you a lot of the information ahead of time. Okay? So remember, the way a scale diagram or, or scale factor works is we go from the real world times the scale factor, and it gets us to our model or the diagram. So when I want to go to the real world, It's going to be the diagram divided by the scale factor. So for bedroom number one, if it tells me I'm two centimeters in the diagram and the scale factor is here, then in the real world, that bedroom, that two centimeters, it's going to be, uh, I'm going to, I believe it's going to be one meter. I'll just double check. Sorry, um, two. Sorry, four meters. Okay. So anywhere that I see two centimeters, I would know that that is four meters in the real world. Okay. So this two. Two centimeters here is four meters, and I know this one already as well because these ones are two centimeters each. OK. 
Okay, and it looks like this is also four meters. So the only measurements I don't know is this two and a half and this four centimeters. So if you were working on that diagram, you work it out, I'm gonna come around and see what's two and a half centimeters in the real world, what's 2.4 centimeters in the real world for this person's room. Okay, so if you had 2.4 centimeters and the scale factor is 0 0.005, you're gonna end up at um, 480 centimeters. Now, I can, I'm converting it to meters because in real life, you probably wouldn't tell someone that you, your room was 500 centimeters, you'd say five meters. So I'm just doing that out of practicality. So the other measurement we don't know is 2.5. So in the real world, that 2.5 centimeters, it's going to get blown up, and the size of it is going to become 500 centimeters or 5 meters. So then I can fill in the rest of the missing measurements. This wall here is 4.8 meters, according to my um, calculations there. And this wall here is 5 meters. So now I know all the sizes of his rooms. Can I just see hands up? You got at least one of the two? Just so I know how we're doing it right now. At least one of the two measurements you're able to do. Okay. So that's all right. We're going to try one last one here. And you might recognize this place. Maybe. Anybody recognize it? Ah, oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. Sometimes it's just helpful to know if you're awake. So, yeah, that's Johnson Heights. <laughs> um, we're going to just take a look, again, like we did before on the Coliseum and the other things we measured. Um, I'll tell you, this is 20 meters. That's what it says there. And I'll give you the measurement off of my ruler here. Um, I get 1.3 centimeters. So what I want to know is what are the dimensions of Johnson Heights? And I'll show you, um, since you don't have access to my picture here, I'll measure it off for you. The width there is at 15 centimeters. And let's see here. The length, the height of it is going to be about five and a half centimeters. Can you guys find my car in the parking lot there? I don't know. It's probably one of these. I don't know. Anyways. Okay, so. As we practiced before, I'll come around and give you a hand because I know it's not the, the, the easiest thing, but lay it out for me. You got all these numbers. The first job you got to do before you can make any sense of them is to find a what? Right, scale factor. That's the first step you should be finding is what is the scale factor? Tell me something important about when you, when you uh, measure a scale factor. What's super important? Match the units. Okay, and then the last one is I'll just remind you, it's the diagram. Oops. Over the actual. Okay, so let's go for a scale factor. Once you've found your scale factor, see if you can work out those actual links, and I'll, uh, I'll give you a hand. I'll come around. Okay, so I'll just quickly give you 1.3 centimeters is 0 0.013 meters. So my scale factor is going to be 0 0.013 divided by 20. So what this is saying is um, to get from the real world, 20 meters in the real world, multiplied by this number, shrinks it down to the diagram. If I have 15 centimeters for the width of Johnson Heights, yeah, it's 15 centimeters, then when I divide it by 0 0.00065, uh, I think it's about 2, is it 240? Is that what I remember seeing? 230? 15 divided by 0 0.00065. Yeah, so it's going to be uh, 223,076 centimeters or 230 point, we'll just round it to 8 meters. Okay, the other measurement was 5.5 .5 centimeters. So if I divide it by the scale factor, I'm going to be at uh, 
um, which I'll just call 84.6 meters. Okay. So there are the questions we're going to work on together just to see how we're doing with scale factor. Um, again, remember Monday will be the last day for you to get your measurements of the school for our school map.